This video will cover a maxillary central incisor number 9 all ceramic crown preparation. Assemble the necessary instruments and materials as shown in this illustration. As a clinical note, before you begin, assess the overall restorability of the tooth. Envision the crown preparation and familiarize yourself with the adequate dimensions for crown reduction. As a tip, Measure the diameter of your burrs in order to use the burrs as depth gauges in the subsequent steps. To use as reduction guides throughout the procedure, fabricate two putty indices. To do so, you will mix half a scoop of base with half a scoop of accelerator. Knead until the color is uniform and adapt the putty over the labial and lingual surfaces of the tooth that you will prepare. Allow the putty to polymerize for approximately two minutes or according to the manufacturer's instructions. Remove the putty and section the indices to create a facial lingual reduction guide as well as an incisocervical cervical reduction guide. Place the indices on the teeth to check their fit. Now that we've prepared, we're ready to begin the crown reduction. Orient the burr 90 degrees to the incisal edge, perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. Create two to three depth grooves at 1.2 to 1.5 millimeters depths. This allows for additional loss of tooth structure during the reduction and finishing. Now, join the depth grooves together. The final incisal reduction is two millimeters. Burr options include coarse to medium grit chamfer ended tapered diamond burrs. Compare the incisal reduction against the reduction guides. For the facial reduction, we will create a dual plane of reduction. To start, create six 0.8 millimeter depth grooves, three parallel to the long axis of the incisal half of the facial surface, and three parallel to the long axis where the tooth emerges from the gingiva, 0.5 millimeters super gingival. Join together the depth grooves. The final facial reduction is one millimeter with dual planes of reduction following the contour of the tooth. Once this facial reduction is complete, compare the dual plane facial reduction against the facial lingual reduction guide and use your probe to measure for appropriate reduction. Now for the incisolingual lingual reduction, again create 0.8 millimeter depth grooves on the incisal third of the lingual surface. Join the depth grooves together such that the final lingual reduction is one millimeter. Compare your reduction against the facial lingual reduction guide and use your probe to measure. The proximal reduction will be completed in a series of steps, which are as follows. The first step is to orient the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth on the facial surface, beginning with either the mesial or the distal side. Penetrate the tooth from the facial and move the burr lingually in a sawing motion be careful to avoid the adjacent teeth. To avoid the adjacent teeth, it is helpful to retain an enamel shell of the proximal tooth structure while splitting the proximal contact. Once the burr moves smoothly from the facial to the lingual, remove the enamel shell either using your burr or a hand instrument. Next, orient the burr parallel to the long axis and repeat the breaking of the proximal contact for the opposing proximal side. For splitting the proximal contact, we recommend using a long needle diamond or 330 carbide or diamond burr. Here we demonstrate breaking the enamel shell with a hand instrument. We recommend a bin angle chisel or an enamel hatchet. The proximal taper should range from approximately parallel to 12 degrees per wall. Ensure the taper falls within that range. Compare your mesial and distal proximal reductions against the incisocervical cervical reduction guide and use the probe to measure. For the lingual wall reduction, we will use indirect vision. Orient the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth along the gingival third of the lingual surface. Optionally, create 0.8 millimeter depth grooves and keep them 0.5 millimeters super gingival. Join the depth grooves together. The final lingual reduction should be a uniform one millimeter, while height should be greater than or equal to one millimeter incisogingivally. 
refine the margin to one millimeter circumferentially along the lingual aspect and 0.5 millimeters supragingival. Extend the lingual reduction and chamfer margin to meet the proximal reduction. Then, continue the proximal reduction to meet the facial reduction, ensuring a consistent one millimeter chamfer margin around the circumference of the entire tooth. Burr options include coarse to medium grit, chamfer and tapered diamond burrs. For the cingulum reduction, it is again optional to create 0.8 millimeter depth grooves in the middle of the cingulum wall. Then, reduce the cingulum to create a concave form with a reduction of one millimeter. It is important to create a concave cingulum, but also retain an adequate lingual wall height. For this step, a coarse to medium grit football diamond is recommended. Compare this reduction against your facial lingual reduction guide and use your probe to measure as necessary. Now it's time to refine and smooth the crown preparation. Refine the chamfer margin so that it is uniformly one millimeter wide circumferentially and approximately 0.5 millimeters supragingival in height. Round all of the line angles of the preparation and ensure that the incisal edge is of adequate thickness, approximately one millimeter. In other words, avoid knife edge or sharp incisal edges. For this step, burr options include medium to fine grit, finishing diamond burrs with a chamfer end. Remove J margins using rotary instrumentation or hand instruments as necessary. And hand instrument options include the bin angle chisel or enamel hatchet. Ensure proper reduction by comparing against the reduction guides and using your probe to measure. Evaluate the crown preparation using our checklist. Ensure that there are no undercuts, that there are no J margins, that all line angles are rounded, that there's a chamfer margin or the appropriate margin expected by your school, and a concave cingulum. That's it. You completed your crown preparation for tooth number nine, all ceramic crown. Congratulations, and thank you for learning with us today.